So today we're going to talk about Leonardo Lazansky and the process of um, doing um, printmaking. So here we have a little bird. Um, since we've talked about the owl this week, I thought it would be appropriate to include another bird. Um, this was done by Leonardo Lazansky. Um, he was the son of um, Rito Lazansky, who is a widely known and very well respected printmaker um, that was from South America, but ultimately settled in Iowa, in the Iowa City area. And Leonardo is one of his children and uh, followed in his father's footsteps to become an artist. He was born in 1946, um, got his degrees from uh, University of Iowa, um, including advanced degrees in art, and has made his um, home and his life um, up in the Twin City Twin Cities area, uh, teaching um, at a university up there. So a little bit about printmaking, because this is a, something we haven't talked about yet. Printmaking, um, when we think of it, we often think of um, bookmaking and poster printing. But printmaking is a little bit different in, when it's on the scale of an artist. So what an artist will do is um, they will somehow transfer the image to paper. And that is, there's a variety of ways in which that can be done. This piece in particular was done from, with using intaglio uh, printmaking. So the method of this is very similar to, if you remember how to do a, a potato print. So that would be called relief print because you'd be leaving things on top, making it a little bit taller. So when you uh, carved around, let's say you left the image of a star, you would put paint on and then you would put down, you know, you'd do your stamping and the image would be a star. Where the paint was is where the image would then be on the paper. And this is a little bit different. Instead of making it raised, you dig down into the metal. And so how he would do it um, is um, by um, engraving, um, and there's also the method of it, um, etching. Etching is using chemicals and acids, and engraving is using a tool called a burin to kind of scrape. And what happens essentially with both of those is you pour the ink over the plate, and then you press the image to the paper, and then where the ink is, obviously, you're going to have the image. And so this is a, a very popular way for artists to do prints. And so it's a little bit opposite of how we think of printmaking. It's between this and a print that you would buy at a large commercial store. Prints in those stores are made by the hundreds of thousands, um, by machines, and they're made very quickly, um, and they're not made by a person. They're made by machines. These prints, um, in which the artist uh, Lazansky would have carved out in the metal, applied the ink, and then he would put the paper down. Every single print was done by himself, by his hand. And so there would be little differences, little smudges, little creases um, that lends to the uniqueness of the work of art. They also have very few uh, pieces that are often made, very few prints. So you can see here, this was number 9 of 50. So that means that very few pieces were made. Generally, when you're looking at fine art prints, we want to see a number, um, no more than 100 made. Sometimes 150, but really you want to stay under 100, um, and 50 is a good number. And um, there's lots of different theories, you know, if you want the lower number, or doesn't really matter. But for us, this one, we have the ninth piece that was made. And then the other thing that's a little bit different is when you have something that's made by an artist, they have their own personal signature on it. So after he made it, he made his signature. And that tells us that it's original, it's not a forgery. Um, sometimes there's commentary on it or they'll write a title of whatever it is. Um, but that shows us and credits it with being an original painting, in an, or excuse me, a print. 
And again, as one of those reasons why um, it's an art print, and so it's a little bit different than something that's made um, in mass quantity.